Hey again everyone, uh, back again with another logic board repair today. I have another uh, machine that uh, seems to have a, be a common issue with these and I was going to walk through uh, with you guys and uh, show you uh, what the issue is. And uh, if you were having the same issue, hopefully this can help you out. Um, it may be different things because this, this kind of problem uh, does have a, a multiple different possibilities of what the issue could be. Like anything electronic, uh, it, it can have multiple problems so it's good to have some diagnosing skills to figure it out. Um, but this one right here uh, we have is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is the 2013 model, uh, the 8203115 board. And uh, this issue, I'll show you what, what it's doing. Adapter. And so you plug in the, the charger and it gets no light at all, as you can see. So there's no power to this board at all. Um, and as, as you know, there's uh, We've, we've had some other videos that talked about this issue, uh, checking your one wire circuit uh, when you're getting no light to the adapter to see if your um, circuitry for the one wire over voltage protection uh, circuit is working correctly. And in checking that circuit, you can uh, diagnose multiple things like your SMC, is it working? Uh, you can see if you're getting the correct voltage through your 3.42 volt uh, rail because um, you need that in the one wire circuit. Um, and all this, uh, these, uh, the, in that circuit, it talks to your power adapter to say, hey, you're getting the correct voltage. Uh, we'll allow you to put the voltage in, and then that's when the adapter light turns on. Uh, so that's going to be the first thing we check with this. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the board from this unit so that we can get a full view of it uh, front and back, and uh, we can diagnose it properly. So I'll be back in just a moment, and uh, we'll, we'll do some diagnosing together. All right, guys, back. I um, got the board out now. We can examine the board. We can uh, measure it with our multimeter uh, wherever we need to. It's always good to take the board out, I think, um, especially when you have a problem like that where there's no power at all and you need to diagnose the board fully. Um, other issues, you can leave the board in and uh, fix it. So if you know the problem is on top of the board, then you can do that. Uh, but when there's a when, there, when there's liquid damage or anything like that, it's good to take the board out so you can make sure that there's no liquid damage on the back side of the board or the bottom side, and uh, make sure the whole board is ready to go. Um, anyways, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to aim the camera down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to plug in the power adapter here, and uh, you see we still have no light. Uh, so let me zoom in on that for you. We still have no light on the adapter. Uh, so uh, this is a completely different MagSafe. Sometimes it's good to go ahead and try a different MagSafe board just in case uh, the issue is the MagSafe board. And if that was the problem, uh, this would be an easy fix. Just put a new MagSafe in there. Uh, but of course it's not. So we're going to continue diagnosing the board. And what we're going to do now is uh, going to look at our 3.42 rail. Uh, let me move you over to the schematics. So here we have the schematics for this board, and what I'm going to do, um, just type in one wire in my search bar here. And so this is our one wire circuit. You see this is our DC power jack plugged in here to our MagSafe. And this goes through the one wire uh, over voltage protection circuit that I was telling you about. And one of the first uh, power voltage rails we're going to check is our 3.42, the PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. That rail is one of our critical ones to get the machine powered on because without that we're not going to get any power from uh, the MagSafe. So let's hop on over to the board view and let's do a search here for uh, 3V42 and right here underscore G3Hot. Alright so up here this is an easy place to measure uh, you know the 3.42 voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and get you set up for that view. Let's see, let me move this under the microscope. And then let me set up the multimeter so you can see that as well. Okay. And as you see, right next to this uh, connector here we have these two resistors and so that is our battery light indicator that's what when you press the button on the side of the computer and it lights up to show you how much battery power you have that's where that ba uh, cable plugs in 
and then we have these two resistors right here. So we're just going to measure on this side here and see if we get any uh, voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power into the logic board. And of course we're not getting any light, but still we're going to measure and just see what we get here. So the black probe on ground, this probe here, and you can see we're not getting any voltage. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to check for a short to ground on that line. And I'm going to move this into resistance mode. Like that. Move it up a little bit. It's a little bit lighter for you, I think. Okay. And now I'm going to put the red probe on ground. And then I'm going to touch one of these and see what it shows up. See, yep, it's a short to ground. So 0 0.001, that means that there is almost a straight, uh, pretty much a straight short to ground on that rail, on your 3.42 voltage rail. Uh, so that's not good. That's the reason we're not getting any light on the back, uh, on the MagSafe. Uh, so now we're gonna look over the board and just see if we can figure out where this short's coming from. One of the first places I like to look is, let me show you the schematics again. And we're gonna hop through Let's see, 3V42, and you can see right here on the, this is the, um, I think it's the block diagram is what it's called. Uh, yeah, I believe this is like the block diagram. Uh, this shows you um, right away where, you know, the main components on the board and where it's all coming from. So you see this right here, 3.425 volt G3 hot. U6990. Let's search for that in the schematic. I'll take that off. Okay. So this is our um, 3.42 volt supply. Um, so U6990. Now we're going to go to the board view and we're going to search for U6990. Where is that located at? Okay, so that's the back side of the board, or the bottom side. And pretty close to the RAN bay, we have this little component here. So let's let, take a look at that and see what it looks like under the microscope. And I can just show you this again. So you can see both. All right, so we're looking for This component right here, the tweezers, the component right there. And that component looks fine, honestly. Um, I don't see any liquid damage around. I see a little bit of junk on it, but um, it doesn't look like it's been um, burned up or anything. So um, that component looks fine. So what we're gonna do now is just move around the board and see if we can find uh, any damage. And another thing I like to do let me go ahead and do this. We're going to just do a search for 3V42. Uh, just pull up the board view, sorry. And we're going to do a search on the board for that. You can see it lights up this area. Um, and there's a component over here. Let's take a look at that. And microscope let's do all view again there we go as you can see it looks fine as well it would be this component here uh, it looks fine so let's zoom back out okay it looks like we have a lot of components up here this is underneath uh, the uh, heat sink area let me get a toothbrush and wipe off all that dust. It's kind of nasty. I still see no liquid damage or anything that would cause a short. And that's what we're looking for right now. I mean, we're just looking for something that we can visually see wrong with it. Okay, uh, the next part we have over here on the other side of the ram bay. Let's take a look at that. Oops. Not mean to knock you down there, Mr. My, uh, multimeter. Okay. So this component over here, and it looks fine too. Don't see any damage. 
Uh, there's another component up here. Nope. Don't see any liquid damage there. Looking good. Alright, let's flip the board over and look up here. This is kind of close to where we were before. Let's take a look and see. Alright. Do you see any liquid damage? What do you think? Right there. I do. I see some little liquid damage. A little bit of corrosion there. Let's pull this pad off this wonderful foam pad. Don't know why it's there. I've never understood why it's there. I just know that when I get it hot, it melts and it stinks. So I'd like to pull it off. Alright, so it looks like this component here, which I believe has to do with the audio, is liquid damaged. And let's see what that component is on our board view. Okay. So, it connects to this over here. And guess what's on the other side of it? So we have PP Audio uh, CHS, and then we have on the other side of this little uh, resistor um, or filter, uh, 3.42 underscore G3 hot. Um, so this most likely is going to be the cause of our short to ground. Um, so what I'm going to do is remove that resistor or this uh, capacitor. I believe it's capacitor. Let's check and see. Yep, C. 6405 or yeah 6405 I'm going to remove this uh, capacitor and see if we lose our short to ground I'm going to aim the hot air away from this connector we do not want to melt that Lovely, doesn't it, when it gets all wet like that? Alright, that component has been removed. Now, remember before we measured our 3V42 um, from these two places? Let's see if we have a short to ground now. We still have it on resistance mode. Red probe on ground. And black probe measure here and look we're getting 0.323 now so we're no longer having a short to ground so we have removed the short to ground so what we're going to do now is we're going to replace this uh, with a good capacitor and because this probably is critical for our audio and we're going to go ahead and do that now so let me go ahead and get you on full view of the microscope And I have a donor board to pull this part from. Let's see. Of course it has foam on it. So let's remove the foam. right here. Let's just measure and see what we're getting on this. And I'm going to measure it the same way I did that one on those two resistors right there and just see what measurement we're getting. I think we got 323 on our 0.323 on our last one. 0.342 so I mean we're, uh, we're we should be good. I, I believe that was pretty close to what our uh, other board was reading. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this capacitor. 
Uh, but first, before I do that, what I want to do is get this board completely ready to put it on because I can't really set that capacitor down somewhere while I'm getting this ready because I would end up losing the capacitor. So I'm going to just put some new uh, solder on this. measure again and see what we are getting now after replacing the, the cap. We're still getting a good reading. We're no longer getting a short to ground. So now, let's do the fun part. Let's check and see if we get a light on our adapter. And if we get a fan stand, so I'm going to take a fan, plug in a fan, we don't really need RAM in it or anything, we're not trying to get it to boot, we just wanted the power on, so let's see what we get. Green light, and a fan spin. So we have fixed the short to ground, we fixed our problem. And now what we're going to do is get it plugged in back into the machine and see if we get a display. All right, well, we're back. We got the, the board plugged back in, all the, the RAM and everything back in it. Good to go. It's not screwed down or anything. I don't like to screw it down until I'm actually ready to make sure that the board is good. Because um, if something else is wrong, then you have to take the screws out again, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, plug it in our power adapter. And you hear a chime which is a good sign. I, like res I actually like reset it, sorry. All right, and we have an Apple logo and it is booting. So it looks like we have fixed the problem. Um, good to go. I don't really want to show you the screen because it's going to be uh, the customer's user information. Um, so I kind of want to hide that from you. Um, but uh, looks like we have fixed the unit. Uh, so good news uh, so I hope this helped you out uh, it's, it's kind of nice to narrow down uh, the, where the issue is coming from uh, take the board out first of all when you have an issue like this so you can check for liquid damage all over the machine um, we didn't see any liquid damage on the underside of the machine uh, but we did on the 3.42 rail which was shorting it to ground uh, that capacitor was bad we replaced the capacitor that's uh, C6405 uh, which removed that short to ground I replace it with a good capacitor and we no longer were getting uh, our 3.42 uh, volt rail to be short at the ground uh, then it was able to uh, send it to the the one wire circuit like it was supposed to and uh, get power to your adapter uh, which was allowing the machine to now turn on uh, so we fixed this problem uh, I hope this was informative for you and helped you out um, make sure that if you do have no voltage on your uh, machine that you are, are checking uh, that voltage rail first, your one wire circuit, because if you're not getting voltage, then you need to uh, uh, figure out why. Uh, you most likely have a short to ground or that uh, 3.42 power supply uh, chip is not working correctly. Uh, so uh, anyways, uh, look forward to more videos and we'll try and get some up for you, for you very soon. And uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the information. Uh, have a nice day.